Okay, this is uh, the 22nd uh, annual pruning demonstration in winter care for the Sacramento area. And this is sponsored by the Sierra Foothills Hills Rose Society. And uh, we've been doing it for 22 years. Uh, this is a different uh, year because of the pandemic, uh, but uh, we hope that uh, we show you the principles of uh, rose pruning and winter care for the Sacramento area. Uh, what we're gonna do in this uh, uh, PowerPoint is I'm going to show you the tools uh, that you can use, or we can talk about the tools that you can use. Um, why you prune in your roses, the principles of pruning, the pruning process, the insects and diseases to watch out for, and whether you want to spray or not, and then some follow-up tips. The best time to uh, prune in the Sacramento area is from mid-December to mid-February. And generally, uh, I wait until the, green, the leaves uh, turn yellow uh, they start falling down by themselves. This uh, show, tells you that the roses are going to senescence and they're ready for pruning. So why do you prune? You prune to uh, remove uh, unproductive growth uh, such as uh, old damage, uh, disease, uh, dead wood, as well as twiggy growth. Um, you try to uh, encourage uh, new basal growth from the around the bud union. Um, and then you want to shape your roses and this is why you prune. Now in colder areas uh, such as the East Coast and the North, uh, north areas like in Washington, uh, 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 Minnesota and all those areas, uh, all those areas are under snow right now. They're, uh, they uh, start pruning the roses in, uh, in March and basically their uh, target is to remove the dead, uh, dead canes uh, from um, the winter weather. So what happens if we don't prune? Um, if we wait too long into uh, late December, uh, uh, February, uh, you risk the danger of, the, danger of uh, the buds breaking dormancy. If this happens, you're going to see a lot of fungal diseases, which may sicken the plant and, and uh, make the plants unproductive. The plants might look really ugly, too much disease, too many dead canes, uh, too much twiggy growth, which will produce very small blooms. Um, so what do, you, what do you need to start pruning in this, uh, in this area? First of all, you need a tetanus shot. Uh, tetanus shots are usually good for 10 years. Um, make sure that you know the last time you, uh, you had a tetanus shot and get a booster. Um, have a, a first aid kit uh, available nearby, just in case that you cut yourself. Uh, you're gonna need a sharp uh, slicing type, hand pruning shears or uh, pruners, uh, the, the kind that uh, cut like a scissor. You're gonna need some loppers. Uh, you're gonna need a pruning saw. And these are used for cutting um, uh, larger canes or thicker canes. Uh, very important, you're going to have some good gloves. Goldskin gloves are the best gloves that we like to use uh, for pruning roses. The uh, canvas uh, gloves that are coated with nitrile uh, are good, but uh, they will not keep the, um, the thorns uh, uh, away. They just keeps your hands dry. Um, elbow uh, length uh, gauntlet uh, gloves uh, or, uh, or canvas sleeves uh, are good because they protect your hand, your arms. Also, you need a uh, can of Lysol spray disinfectant so you can um, disinfect your tools. Anyway, you need to protect yourself. And in this, case, in this slide, you can see that uh, K. Jelton is uh, protected very well 
for the thorns, you can see that she's using long, uh, uh, long sleeves. Uh, uh, she also has uh, headgear, uh, glasses. Uh, the guy on the on the left hand side is not uh, is not well protected. You can see that he's only using his um, uh, gauntlet gloves. Uh, that's a no no for pruning roses. Uh, you should dress like uh, Kay Jelton, uh, several layers of clothing. Uh, pruning tips. The goal is to encourage new replacement canes from the bud union for the crown of the rose. Always start from the, your pruning from, the, from uh, the bud union or the crown and work, your, uh, and work up uh, one cane at a time. Remove all canes and leaves, uh, and leave new replacement canes. Okay, so this is an example of uh, some of the stuff that you need to remove. On the right hand side, you can see um, uh, the old wood that was produced in this uh, climbing rose, and this lateral that goes to the uh, to the to the left, that's new wood. And you can see the difference between new wood and old wood. The old wood bark is gray, rough, in, in, or split, or corky. And the prickles are gray or white. The new wood, on the other hand, are, is, uh, are uh, green, smooth, and the prickles are brownish. This is an uh, example of um, a new wood but you can see that they're different colors. Uh, the one on the uh, left-hand side is a little bit weathered. It's a little bit older. The one on the right is a new cane. Those are the type of canes that you need to leave when you're pruning your roses. Now, the pruning, the pruning should, um, should proceed above a outward pointing bud unless those, uh, the roses are too close to, um, to a walkway, then you prune to an inside bud. And this, uh, this pictures show uh, samples of the buds. And then you can see I angled these cuts. The first two slides on the right, on the left hand side are the right kind. You can see that I cut above healthy tissue. Uh, you can show, you can, uh, you can tell the healthy tissue because it's whitish. So the picture on the, on the right is a little bit too, uh, too acute. The angle is too acute and, and kind of goes below the bud. We discourage um, those, ki those kinds of cuts. So, so the bottom line is um, cut above the, the bud about a quarter of an inch to half an inch. Don't worry about the angle of the, of the cut. The angle is irrelevant. And um, you want to open the center of the bush. Uh, so like, um, like a bowl shaped um, uh, situation with the uh, canes going toward the outside. In this slide, uh, you can see um, the, ro the rose in the, in the um, left-hand side. It's kind of bushy. Whereas the one that I'm pruning on the right-hand side, you can see that I'm removing all the twiggy canes from the middle so that I can, so that there's good air circulation going in that bush. And you can see, here's the final product. Uh, I left uh, just the, uh, the newer canes and that bush will produce uh, a lot of bloom, just like the, the year before. Here are examples of, um, of another rose that I pruned. Left hand side, how many, uh, how many canes he had. That's too crowded. What I did is I, um, 
I cut some of those extra canes and then I shortened the, um, the, uh, the, the canes uh, to a desired height. How high you prune a cane is a matter of preference. These are miniature roses, so they're, I only prune them to a foot to 18 inches high. Now, whether you want to spray or not, that's a, that's a personal decision. Some people are, you know, they just kind of don't want to spray. Other people, they want to spray as soon as they see problems. If you see fungal diseases while you're pruning, it might be a good idea to spray with a, a general fungicide that will control some of those uh, diseases that you see. I'm going to show you some slides of some of the common diseases that you, you might be able to see in your garden as you do the pruning. Now for insects, the most common insects that you're going to see at this time of the year are scale insects and aphids. But there might be signs of other insects such as uh, spider mites. Now, if you see those, take, take note because uh, you need to use the right type of insecticide or uh, controlling those problems. Uh, for rose diseases, uh, we're going to cover uh, black spot, rose rust, powdery mildew, cankers, uh, botrytis, and bacterial crown gall. Uh, these, are, uh, these are pictures of powdery mildew on the stems as you, can, as you can encounter them while you're pruning. Uh, if you still have blooms, you might see um, powdery mildew in the peduncle or right below the, um, the bud or where the buds were produced and in some of the foliage. If you still have foliage that is green, but more, more likely, you're going to see powdery mildew spores and mycelium or the strands of the, of the fungus on the thorns or the prickles and in some of the stems, especially some of the twiggy stems or the, or the um, kind of greenish stems. Now, be aware of that because you might need to use the right fungicide for controlling the powdery mildew. This, uh, in this slide, you can see powdery mildew. Uh, uh, this is a, a bad infestation of powdery mildew. And if that's the case, you're going to see this in very susceptible varieties. So you might consider uh, uh, replacing the bush with a, with a uh, variety that is less resistant. I mean, it's more resistant to powdery mildew. Now the next disease is uh, black spot. This is very common in, um, especially in older varieties of roses. Uh, black spot, you can see that um, is uh, black. The spots are black. Um, and the, uh, the edges of the spots are kind of feathery. And this is a uh, superficial uh, fungus that grows on top of the leaves. This is, uh, uh, the next disease is, is called uh, rose rust. And rose rust is characterized by pustules growing on the undersides of the leaves. Uh, the pustules is like uh, dust. Um, and uh, rust has several spore stages. The most common ones are the uh, orange ones that are produced during the growing season in the black ones, which are uh, the, that have more resistant cell walls, and they in, uh, enables the rust to um, overwinter. On top of the leaves, you will see uh, spots, orange spots uh, on, on top of the leaves. And that's an indication that you have rose rust. And then if you turn the leaf over, you're going to see the dusty uh, material uh, caused by the, um, by the spores of the rust. A very common uh, fungus 
is called rose canker. And there are several uh, species of rose cankers, but they're all um, characterized by uh, damage, uh, um, disease uh, tips of the canes. And then the rust, I mean, the, the fungus continues downward. And this is caused by, by uh, 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 injured canes or cut canes. And then you have humidity, and then you have the spores uh, uh, present. When you prune your roses for canker, you need to cut, cut down until you see. Now the next uh, disease is Botrytis fungus. This is a very common fungus in the fall months of the year. Uh, they, this uh, uh, fungus starts with spots on the petals and then those spots grow. The, the spores are like seeds. So they land on the, on the petal and then they just kind of grow into a colony of the fungus and they just kind of uh, continue growing and then the, the, the whole petal will be infected. And then pretty soon the whole bloom will be infected. Uh, when the, the whole bloom is infected, we call it uh, bloom rot. Uh, this is a very damaging uh, fungus. If you let it uh, continue, it will reinfect, it will infect your whole garden. So it's very important to take it out as soon as you can. The last disease that we're going to cover is bacteria crown gall. This is called by a bacteria that causes uh, uncontrolled growth uh, in the form of galls. And you can find the bacteria, uh, the bacteria galls on, on the crowns, on the roots, or in the area of forms on the area stems of the rows, as you can see in these two slides. Uh, the one on the right is on the crown of the rose, and on the one on the left is a major cane just above the, um, the crown of the rose. Um, whenever I see a uh, crown gall in my garden, I discard the, uh, the whole rose bush and uh, I replace the, um, the, uh, as much of the, the soil uh, with, uh, with uh, a new uh, soil. Uh, basically, I go to a different part of the yard and then bring a wheelchair, um, a wheelbarrow full of soil, and then I use that to replace the, uh, the one that I, I got rid of. And then the bush goes right into the trash can. These are some of the chemicals that you can, you can use um, for, um, for controlling uh, some of your rose diseases. They're divided into con contact um, in, uh, fungicides and systemic fungicides. This is an example from, um, that I took, uh, that I took uh, from um, Green Acres uh, this morning. I was over there because I want to see what they had in stock. Pesticides uh, are taken off the shelves continuously. So you need to um, uh, be aware of this and uh, visit your, your uh, nearby uh, nursery and see what they have and consult with um, the nursery persons which might uh, give you some advice on the, on the type of diseases that you want to control. Uh, these are some of the systemic fungicides that I saw while I was at, um, at uh, 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 Green Acres and uh, Lowe's um, uh, uh, pesticide uh, shells. Um, a lot of people use uh, the uh, a product called Immunax, and uh, but the most common one is in is um, is the blue one, uh, call, uh, is from Bios, Bio Bio um, Advance, uh, and that's um, 
that's a product that you um, you can spray on the on the foliage, or you can um, drench on the soil. Some of the other ones uh, you can also just read the label, and you can the, the label will tell you how to apply it and how how often you should apply it. This all these uh, chemicals will control the um, the fungal diseases, not the bacterial diseases or other type of diseases caused by other organisms, such as viruses or nematodes or the like. Now, in the garden, the two most common uh, insects you're going to see are the aphids. And that you find those in, um, in roses or nearby bushes that have green foliage, especially new foliage. Uh, aphids love new foliage. And um, anyway, it's important that you, when you uh, finish pruning your roses, you remove all the foliage because it might harvest some of these pests that we've been discussing. The, the most important insect pest are the rose scales. And there are several types of rose scales. The three most common rose scales that we find in the area are rose scale. And as you can see on the left hand side, rose scale also attacks um, uh, uh, blueberries. I mean, not blueberries, uh, blackberries and boysenberries. And, um, and those type of um, uh, uh, berry bushes. Um, the one on the right is a, um, is a stem, and it had a, a pregnant female. And as you can see, I removed the scale, you know, the cover, and inside, uh, inside I found a female with a lot of eggs on it. Those eggs will hatch in the spring, and then they will, they will uh, move maybe a millimeter or two, not too far but they can also be, be moved by uh, wind or by animals uh, uh, moving in the foliage, such as birds, uh, uh, hummingbirds and the like. Uh, uh, animals that, um, that visit those, um, those uh, roses. This is San Jose scale, also very common in some areas. And especially if you have fruit trees, because the primary host of uh, uh, San Jose scale is fruit trees. Um, and again, it can be moved by wind. The, the crawlers are, can be moved by wind or by uh, birds. Um, scale insects uh, can be controlled by uh, insecticidal soaps, oils, um, but you're going to be needing several applications. I personally recommend the oils on uh, maybe a three week uh, um, cycle. A friend of mine that had a huge infestation with uh, um, San Jose scale uh, had to apply uh, five applications of oil in the, um, in the spring months of the year in order to get rid of it. So it's a, uh, Persistence is the uh, is the bottom line here, and uh, these are more um, uh, insecticides you can find in the in the store. Uh, the first two are well, the first in the upper part you can see uh, those are insecticides that are specific for caterpillars, which you will be finding later on in the year, especially in March and April. You're going to find the uh, the fruit tree leaf rollers. Uh, in the bottom, you're going to see the uh, products containing a, micro a microbial-based pesticide called spinosad. And those can be used for uh, all insects. And of course, uh, there are systemic insecticides. Um, and we, I personally only recommend using these products uh, on the last resort. Um, if you're going to use them, it's best to apply them as a drench. And if, 
if you're going to use them as a spray, make sure you spray it in the evening when the, the bees are not visiting your roses because these are very toxic on bees and um, some of the pollinating insects. So to summarize, um, once you, once you uh, finish pruning, you need to go back through your garden and make sure that you remove all the leaves from your roses, uh, especially around the, the rose beds. Um, make sure that you don't have any uh, rose debris around the roses because those are harvesting diseases. Um, uh, go around your roses and make sure you don't have any weeds, especially like um, deeply rooted weeds like a Bermuda grass or oxalis, or heaven's uh, sake, uh, hopefully you don't have a uh, nut sage or um, uh, field vine weed or something like that. Um, for weeds, um, uh, we recommend using a pre-emergence herbicide uh, to control them. It's just like bird control for, for weeds. And um, Later on, after uh, after you prune, uh, after mid uh, February, first uh, of March, you can start uh, putting some uh, soil amendments in your rose garden, um, and and um, you can use uh, granular fertilizers uh, or some of the other um, soil amendments as needed in your garden. Uh, but make sure you read the, pro the product label because um, sometimes you can burn the heck out of your roses if you apply them too deep, too, too heavily. And of course, the final thing that you need to do in your garden is to add lots and lots of mulch. Uh, choose a mulch, an organic mulch that you like to see. I like to add uh, at least four inches of mulch around the rose beds but I do not like to cover the bud union because the bud union needs to be free of mulch in order to produce a, a new, new growth. I'd like to thank you for uh, listening to my program. And uh, the last slide that I'd like to show you is, uh, this is the product that uh, I use in my garden, it's print. Um, and I'd like to end it with this slide. Uh, I usually use spring at least a couple of times a year. Um, it does, it does, it lasts uh, at most uh, about three months. So you need to kind of be on top of the weeds. Thank you very much. This is Valdo Villegas and we're um, continuing the, uh, the pruning demonstrations uh, for the Sierra Foothills Rose Society. And today we're going to have uh, uh, Sue McGill talk about tools of the trade. Uh, Sue is a master rosarian uh, judge with the American Rose Society. She's been growing roses forever <laughs> since she was 12 years old. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, envious because I've been, I, I grew roses from uh, 1981 or so when I first got my house. So you got me beat. Well, it was only because my mother was a gardener and we had roses in the backyard. So, so take it away, Sue. Okay, the first thing I want to say is we're talking about tools today, but one of the most important tools before you ever get out to the garden is to make sure you have a tetanus shot and it's up to date now more than ever but you need to do that especially when you're out this time of year okay I'm gonna start with probably gloves because we you need gloves and there's all kinds of gloves 
and there's all kinds of theories about them. Um, this time of year, you might want long gloves that come up. And I have these, and you can see I've used these. Uh, you can always tell because I have... Um, you taped them tape. up. I, I just, <laughs> listen, duct tape works in the garden, too. Uh, I have my show gloves. These are the ones a lot of people like to use. They're goat skin and they go way up, but for me, they're not pliable enough. So I like to use these, they're a little bit better, and then I use these, which are much easier, and they're called an armadillo, and they go over, and they still protect you. So I can wear just regular goatskin gloves, and again, this is the same thing. I used, to, I, I used to wear those when I used to pick uh, citrus. Exactly. That's where they came from. Yes. But they work. But these are my show ones. These are the ones that I use winter and summer because they work even when you have short gloves on. Okay. So those are gloves. Don't go out in the garden without gloves. So, Which I do, but one of the other thing is that we need to dress accordingly. Of course, uh, exactly. You know, get get dressed with clothes Listen. that you don't mind ripping, ripping. or be, and then get a couple layers, layers. on because Absolutely. you're going to get poked by the by the thorns. You are, so and you have to be careful. And then also you need some head protection. And if you wear glasses, make sure you wear glasses, and if you need safety glasses, over the top of them, so you don't get poked. So that's good to know. I'm just looking. Oh, and also, you might want to get garden shoes. Chances are it's going to be crummy and wet and yucky when you're doing pruning this time of year. Later on in the summer, you might want to wear those too, just because they're easier to put on and off when you go out into the garden and they protect your feet because chances are there's going to be thorns and pruning branches that you might step on so you want to be protected all over and obviously this is not what I would wear to prune in but this is not actual pruning day as you'll see from the garden okay the next important thing are pruners you want to make sure you get pruners that are bypass. That means they are like a, like scissors. You might have other pruners that you think are fine, but they're awful. Don't use them. They're called anvil, and what they do is chop and shred. You want to use these for other things like cutting drip irrigation. I mean, they can still be used, but not on your roses. I like to use uh, these uh, ARS pruners because they have rotating handles, and they're and it's a lot easier in your hands. Well, especially it, when you're going to be pruning a lot, a lot of roses. Now, my problem with that is I have a small hand, so I have an ARS pruner, but it's a smaller size, and they don't come yeah. in rotating. This is, it uh, opens too big. This is the small size for the ARS pruner. Yeah, which is still and too big for me. This is um, the larger hands for. Okay. And these are wonderful. One of my favorite parts is they have this little latch, so you only have to do it one-handed. You can open it, and you can close it without having to use your other hand. Yeah. You can still be holding. This one, you go like that, and then you. Up. And that's the the way you. Close it. Yeah. But there's sometimes your thumb gets tired. <laughs> now, there are other pruners that you might have for your miniatures. And these are extra. A lot of the things we show you are going to be extra. Think of them as maybe extra toys that you might have um, in your tool chest. But what you really need are your tetanus shot your pruners, and the clothing that you need. 
These other things might be just extra, but if you don't have too many roses, you don't need all this other stuff. And I use a, not a holster, but one of these, and you can see it's been through many things of duct tape. And I can keep pruners in there. I often keep a pencil in there. I usually keep my sharpener in there just in case so I don't have to keep coming back and forth to um, a table or another structure, which is why you might consider having either a bucket or something else that you can carry some of these extra things with so it just is easier. You don't have to put them down on the wet ground. Um, you can just put them in the whatever you're going to use to carry. You also, one of my favorite tools year-round, is this basket. They make them much larger. This is like a junior size, but it's much easier for me to use, to dump, to just kind of keep around. Also, it fits around the roses. Yes, it's easier to get in and out when you have crowded roses. Okay, a couple of other pruning kind of tools. This is one you're probably familiar with. It's huge. I don't use it. When my husband was doing the pruning, he would use it. For me, it's just the handles are too long. What I prefer to use is one that's this size. And it allows me to get in and under and cut wherever I need to. Or And notice where I'm putting these. I'm putting these in a container that is filled with kitty litter, which sounds crazy. But I think it helps keep the tools from getting rusty and crummy. And it's also handy to have to just stick them in. You know exactly where they are. You don't have to spend time uh, thinking, where did I put that? If you always put it back where it should belong. This is another tool that I think is easy for me to use. It's a long-handed handled pruner but is not that long. And you can reach in, clip, especially with a climber, or if something is back and you don't want to get all snagged, you can use this. And then there is this, which is another kind, I think it was called a giraffe, but it's the same idea. We have them to, to pick fruit but it also works for climbers. And it's the same idea, which is not working, but this opens up and then you can hold it and it kind of telescopes. So if you have a really tall rose, it would work. Obviously it doesn't get used too much, but it's available. Okay, that kind of takes care of some of the pruners that I use and I would say if you are only going to get two, get a good pair of pruners, bypass pruners, and a lopper. And depending how dainty you are, you might want a short one. Or if you're somewhat huskier, you might want a big one. But if you don't have a lot of roses, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can get by with just a set of good bypass pruners. If you only have a few roses, you can get a less expensive and fancier. These were Martha Stewart years ago, and I don't really use them, but I thought they were kind of pretty. So it's up to you and how much you want to spend um, on your hobby. Because remember, the whole point of this is finding joy out in your garden. Um, during these times of horrid, these horrid times that we're living in, you want your garden to be a silver lining for your life. And roses can provide that. Okay, enough of that. Um, a couple other tools that you might want to, after all your pruning is done, or as you're pruning, you, depending on how you want to do it. Some people prune 
one bush and clean out that whole bush by raking out all the junk around. You might have to take out all the old bark you have so you can eventually put down new mulch and fertilizer. Now's not the time you have to do that. But you do need to rake and clean up because tidiness is important in a rose garden. Uh, you might want to use a rake. I have all these tools and some of them are nice and shiny because they don't get used to often. But you know, I, I, have, I have like 10 of those. I know. I have them everywhere. <laughs> I do too. I do too. So this gets in and underneath and it just kind of helps um, in your tidiness. Um, you can also use one of, I usually don't have so many in here at one time. I have several of these going on. Um, a smaller rake. If you want to rake around, it's up to you. You, you kind of pick your, pick your tools. You certainly don't need as many as we have, but we've been acquiring them for a long time, and each year there's a new favorite. So um, after you've cleaned out under your bush, you're going to check for weeds. And you can do that with a little, if it's just a little one, I use those. Uh, I use this. Use this tool for dandelions. Oh yes, I do too. And, and uh, crabgrass. And well, for things that are deeply rooted. Yeah. I use them for that. Yeah, I do uh, too. And you can get ex inexpensive ones and expensive ones. So, mm -hmm. again, the the ones that are really sharp are good. But I usually keep those taped up. Um, this is another one that gets in between. Again. This is a pricier one that you don't really need, but it's nice to have in your toolbox. Okay, Aldo, can you see anything else in here I need to pull out? No, I think we got Oh, here's, here's, a, here's this, was a new, this was a favorite a couple years ago, and I kind of forgot about it. But it gets in, and you can pull back, and it um, gets up a whole string of weeds. Because you want to get those weeds out now. Because uh, later you might put down. Oh. Well, my favorite tools is I have a sickle uh, tool like this that, that I can get the, the roots out of the Bermuda grass. Oh. And I can also dig a little bit. Yeah. And then it, it cuts the roots. Oh, and then, of I... course, for, I use something like this. It's another weeder. And then I, I uh, scrape all the weeds from all from around the, the drip line of the rose. Yeah, I think I have one of those yes. two over in my other. Anyway, so these are yeah. my favorite um, weeding tools. And this one looks like it needs to be cleaned a little bit. It might need a little WD-40 and a little sharpening. I don't do any of that stuff. <laughs> well, that's why I use this. You can, be, you can make this as um, intense as you need to. Uh, but it's also easy to garden. It doesn't have to be hard. It's supposed to be enjoyable, so keep it enjoyable. How do you, uh, how do you um, sharpen your tools? Okay, well, often if I can find somebody else to do it, I do that. Um, you need a diamond file, or there's all kinds of tools that you can get that will sharpen. And then you're just going to run your file around and then you're going to go like that to get all the extra stuff off. And it's much better to have a sharp uh, tool. And truly, the more expensive pruners that you buy, the longer they last. And they'll stay sharp for much longer, and you won't have to do this. I usually only have to have them sharpened maybe once a season, and we have 500 roses. So I know, crazy. Crazy. Compulsive and crazy, well, but that's a, that's very enjoyable. It is for you, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it and it was a step down from when we had 800. So, <laughs> um, so that that's how I prune. Now, if you buy less expensive, I would say you're going to have to you're going to have to sharpen a little more often, and you might have to buy uh, pruners every year. 
So I think it's better to invest in the beginning if this is going to be one of the things that you're out taking care of. And as I say that, these don't just cut roses. They cut any kind of um, plant that you happen to have. So if you garden perennials, if you garden succulents, these will also work. But we tend to think that they're just for uh, roses. Uh, and we say that our favorite is... How do you is, disinfect your tools? I, well, I was just going to say, we say that our favorite brand is ARS. It doesn't have anything to do with the American Rose Society. Just to put that down, um, but they are wonderful pruners and tools. I use Lysol. When we had to start using a lot of sanitizer, I had to go out to my garden stuff to find my can of Lysol. Now I have it everywhere. So there's Lysol. There's also this for your hands. So you're going to keep, even though you have gloves on, occasionally you're going to have to use a Kleenex and you take your gloves off. Make sure you um, take care of sanitizing throughout your uh, trips outside. Also some spray. So I think those are things that we have around very readily now. So make sure you use them. Um, not just for the hygiene that we need to keep healthy, but also the hygiene we need to have out in the garden year round. So if we ever get through this pandemic, these will still be good out in your garden shed. So. Um, a couple other things that I use as I'm pruning. Um, oh, this, this has to be one of my favorite tools. This is, a, this is a shovel. In the rose world, we talk about roses that aren't performing very well, meeting Mr. Shovel. Well, this is my Mr. Shovel. That's your shovel pruner? This is my shovel pruner. We talk about digging up a rose as shovel pruning it. Um, this one works. It works because I'm short, but I think it works for anybody. And one thing that I do is if a rose is not performing well, as much as it's hard to give it up, um, I'll say, Rose, this is Mr. Shovel. Either produce or you're going to meet him up close and personal later. So a rose, and I, I, I'm serious, sometimes that's effective. Sometimes they do meet Mr. Shovel later, but not always. Okay, let's see where we are. But it is one of my favorite tools, um, not just for um, the time that I want to dig up a rose, but also when I want to plant a rose. So it's important. Um, Baldo, we were going to talk about, oh, WD-40, you probably have some. That will help with your tools, too. They will help sometimes just cleaning them. It gets some of the rust off in case there's rust. That happens sometimes. The rust on the tools, right? Rust on the tools, yeah. Not rust on the, on the foliage. <laughs> that we want to get rid of totally. Okay, when you've pruned your rose, even if you've decided you want it, want it to meet Mr. Shovel right then, sometimes you don't want to dig it up right then, you might want to use some tape to mark it because... You know, we're not all as young as we used to be. Sometimes we forget. And so if you mark your rows that this is what you want to take out, you can dig it up later, like the day before the trash is going to be picked up. Okay, so that's, this works for um, climbers, but it also has other, other uses in the garden, and as does just rope. I like this rope. To, to pull up my climbers, as a matter of fact. Okay, something else you might want to have available, because you are going to be planting new roses this year. I know you are. We always like to label our roses. This is one thing that we often use, this and a label maker, which I don't have out here. But So have these available. Don't, don't forget. 
I know you think, oh, I'm going to remember what that rose is. But you don't sometimes. I have one over there, Baldo, I want you to identify because I can't I don't know what it is and I can't find its label. <laughs> you might also want to have just a pair of regular scissors, garden scissors. Because um, you never know when you might need to cut something. You know, so what I do is um, I have a uh, label. Yes. And then when I plant the rose, uh, I put this label. On the south too. side, on the south side of the of the bush, the all my roses in the south side, about five inches from the from the trunk, I put this label with the name of the rose. Now, do you use a pencil? Yes. And, and, do I, you, and I dig it. I dig it in. South side, so it doesn't get. Uh, that way, I can find it. Well, and south side also because it's not going to get um, the west sun to bleach it out, because right. I've had that problem. And anyway, it's, it's, um, it's, Way buried, down there. it's buried in the soil. That way, uh, my, my nephews or my grandkids don't come over and play yeah. games with me yeah. by changing the labels around. I, I'm not sure where that label went, because normally when I get a new rose, I'll make a label before it even gets planted. So anyway, that, I learned this uh, by the hard way. Yeah. It was, my kids were always changing. Changing, labels. yeah. Um, also, someplace close to where you're working, if you have a work table or something, um, I always have a, a notepad out with um, something to write if you need to make a note to yourself or whatever, because you're going to think of things, and sometimes it's just a pleasant thought. Come over and write it down because it will be gone from your memory and it could be um, something that's really important and will give you some joy later or it's going to tell you a task that you need to take care of later but not right then. So that's just kind of extra stuff and I would, I would have water available because you, you might get dehydrated so take care of yourself. Um, you might want some fruit just happens to be mandrels. Here. Um, here's something else you might want um, is... I've been using this, um, this uh, gadget uh, quite a bit. I know. Well, it now, works... Especially now that uh, you're I'm younger. up in years. <laughs> I was going to say, because you're younger, I know exactly how old he is. So. Um, yeah, this is like a kneeling pad. And Baldo has actual kneeling... Um, things that he puts down. I tend to not want to get that far down on the ground. Um, so I use it more like this where I can sit and prune. I got one about a month ago. Oh. Because I was, uh, I injured my, my knee and I had problems getting, getting up. back up. So this works so, as a... Anyway, then I remember that you, you had one <laughs> and I said, oh, Sue had one of those. What? So I went to Amazon, I got one. Oh, okay. For about 35 bucks. I have no idea. This is so old that it's been, um, well, you can see. Evidently, there were times that it didn't get moved in and it got wet. And so it's rusty, but it works. Yeah, I, I saw you using it, of, I don't know, 15 years ago. Oh, at least. <laughs> at least. I've been old for a long time, Baldo. <laughs> But gardening keeps me young. Well, you know, it, you've been keeping this thing in the in the right place. You have yep. to put it indoors. Well, I, but if you leave it outdoor like I, I do, yes, it doesn't look, uh, last as long. Yeah, that's true. And we have this wonderful overhang where we can keep things out year round. We don't have to make sure they go in the cart. They're okay. And right now, often what it is when it rains. The bird feeders go here, so they're not outside, but the birds can still get to them. So, uh, Olo, can you think of anything else we need no, to do? No, no. We've covered all. Did we cover it all? Yes. And it, remember to keep it simple. And that's one of my things about roses is kiss. Keep it simple sunshine. So, even though you don't always have to work out in the sunshine, the garden will make you, it's like it's a sunny day in your heart. Thank so, you very much. Uh, thank for, you uh, and enjoy your pruning.
Thank and you very much, Sue, for a uh, wonderful Oh, demonstration. thank you. <laughs> thank <laughs> <As always>. you. <laughs> climbing rose or a climber because uh, they grow in such a way that you can put them on a structure. Uh, climbers don't do this by themselves. They need someone to tie them on or to direct them. Uh, the reason I'm using my long sleeved leather gloves is because they are a climber and you can run into a lot of thorns. So I'm going to show you the best and easiest way to prune a climber. climber. This is uh, Chateau de Clos Vougeau from France. It uh, has been in my garden for about four years and I'll show you how to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I have already tied these uh, canes onto the support last year and during the blooming season. So I am going to cut, I have my twine, my jute, and I'm going to cut the old pieces to get all of these off of the structure. So they're gonna flop. They're gonna flop off. And I'm gonna just kind of get the leaves off as I go. The goal will be to get all of the leaves off. The reason I'm going to get all the leaves off is because they're old. They'll um, be getting some disease and fungus, and I don't want that to transfer to the new leaves as it starts growing in the spring. So you can see I'm finding all of the old ties. So I want to be able to get this off of the structure, see what I've got, and then tie it back where I want it. Aldo are my sous chefs here. So let's see, I think I've got just about. You've got some nice new canes growing. It's, it's great. The new canes are, you can tell, because they're, they are a little bit greener, right? Right. So the, and the new canes are a lot of, on this rose particularly, they're more purple. Oh. So the purple canes or the green canes are all the new things. So do you, do you, how do you determine which cane to cut? Do you so go I'm all the new show ones? you that later? We're gonna start with Baldo's method. Baldo's method is that we look at the bottom of the rose first. Okay, we've got a great pile of leaves here. I, I think we're just about ready. There's a couple right there. As we get rid of the leaves, then we can see more. See the structure, see what we've got. Okay. All right. So you can see that during the growing season, the rose has gone in and out on both sides of the structure. I don't want to keep them that way because as the rose gets older, and the canes get larger. I don't want them to grow into the structure. Let's 
So that's why I'm going to try and keep them on the outside. One isn't coming and it's tied on. So you can see the canes, these long canes, are floppy. That's why you get to decide where you want your rows to go because it's going to just get floppy. Okay. Yeah. So we are just about ready to look at the bottom of the king of rows. The Baldo method is that we look at the bottom to look at the dead, diseased, or damaged, damaged or canes that are going in the wrong direction. So the first thing I notice are a couple of very old canes. The reason I know they're old is they have gray on them, just like we get gray hair. There. So I'm going to see what taking this whole thing out is going to do to the rose to the whole bush. And I see that it's going to be just fine if I take this whole wow. thing out. So this whole thing is an old one. It was probably, it's probably four years old as I planted the rose four years ago. And so it's going to go out. Do you need a lover? Huh? You want a lover? I do want a lopper. This is a lopper. It's a little longer and stronger. And you get more leverage so you can get in there. So a little hand So on I'm going to cut it off clear at the bottom. I do not want a stump. I want the root ball to be available for the sun so that a new cane can grow. So this may look severe, but I've got a whole bunch of stuff left. Now I'm going to cut it in pieces so we can get it out of here. Okay. Okay, there, that goes. Still tied up here. Where's the rest of it? Okay. So that's gone. The next one I see is this one. It looks the same, the same age. So I'm gonna cut that little piece off so I don't have to pull it out of the window of the grill. And my decision now is do I take it all the way down and lose this one? Or do I take it to here and keep this one? I could do either one, but I think I'm going to be conservative and just take the oldest part. This sure looks pretty, like you said, greenish. Yeah, this has a couple of still, they can probably go next year. <laughs> wow. So you're almost planning for a couple of years, huh? Yes. I got kind of like baseball. There's always next year. And then there's one in the middle that's really old. And you can look and see how productive it was during the year. It was not. So that's an easy one to take completely out. It didn't bloom much then. It, it didn't, didn't do grow. much. And here's another little piece that didn't do much. I'm looking at this one. <laughs> I'm going to just take the oldest part. Yeah. There. Okay, our major work is done. Okay. So now we're going to clean up. There they are. We're going to clean up what we've got left. In other words, take all the leaves off. 
We're going to take all the leaves off and I'm going to go one cane at a time. So one cane at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do with the cane is go to the end of it and cut it back to an eye. Here's a butt eye. There's a butt eye. There's a butt eye. I want one that's going down. If I take one that's going up, it's going to go out away from the support. So I want a butt eye that's going down. Do you They're see like that little, little bump right there? Bump or pimples. I'm going to take that one and keep ah. that little one that goes down. And that's that. How far away from the butt eye? Uh, just about a quarter of an inch. Yeah, that's exactly or a quarter less. inch. Yeah. And then I think I'm going to take this whole end out because I'm going to clean up. So now I'm looking for another butt eye that's going down. And then I'm going to look along the edge. And all of these are going to be laterals. That's going to grow longer during the blooming season. And that's going to have a rose. If I just put it like this, straight up, I would only have one rose there and one rose there. But a climber, you want to bend so that every single one of these will have a rose. So the best way to bend it, I'm going to bend it this way, and then I'm going to bend it Oh, like this an way. S. I'm gonna make okay. S's out yeah, of like it. Yeah, like our snake. Yes. <laughs> And I'm going to tie them to my support that way, and I will get maximum bloom. Like I said, the terminal eye would be the only one that blooms if I, go up if I just left it straight. So I don't want to leave it straight. I want as many blooms as I possibly can get. And so I'm going to do that and that. Are and all that. roses really... Um flexible like this? In December, January, February, because of the rains and whatever, they are very flexible. So this is the time to do it. Okay. Let's get started. The ones closest to the structure would be the smartest ones to do. So I'm going to bend as far as it will bend, this side first. So you're trying to make it... I'm going to do the S shape. Oh, and you make it so it's kind of level like that. Yeah. And then, as I can, I'll turn it back. Oh, I'll have to see that. So that's why I'm tying it closer over here. But, where's my scissors? I need to do something with that which is going to be the same thing. And so this one is going to go on the underneath side. And it's going to go wherever it will bend. I'm going to tie it down kind of as far as it'll bend. Now these are going to be covered up by the leaves and the growth, but I'm still going to cut off the ends so it'll just look neater. Yeah, and I knew this was pliable and I've already done the S stuff, so yeah. I knew that was going to be a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to do 4th of July like that. No, my 4th of July is in a bad spot and it's short. And I feel anything that. along the fence is mm -hmm. higher and the water comes down and it's yeah. more clay. So it's very short and but, not happy. But what I'm saying is 4th of July is so thorny. Oh, yeah. So thorny that uh, yeah. I was doing it the other day and I'm going... Uh, yeah. Even the glove, even the glove was a challenge. Yeah, yeah I guess. Well, did. my two polyanthos from Fabian are terrible. Not this one as much. This one, no, this one's horrible. Yeah.
Charlotte Owen Dyke, and we're going to prune this tree rose. And Baldo's going to help me because it's a big tree rose. It's got some big canes on it. So we're going to explain how to do it. it this is Oh My. This is a beautiful uh, dark red uh, Floribunda. Uh, you can see that it's an exhibition Floribunda, and it's an amazing rose. Uh, look at it. It's in December and it's yeah. in full bloom still. This Gorgeous. is a fantastic rose to get uh, for your garden. Okay, the first thing what we're going to do is strip it of all the leaves because we want to see the structure that's in here. So you, may, well, you can watch us do it a little bit and then break. So this got too many. So I see that you're getting rid of the leaves. Yeah. Why are you doing that? Are you taping? Yes. We, leaves get a lot of, um, they harbor insects and they harbor uh, disease. So lots of times you'll get black spot or rust or mil, powdery mildew. So we're taking it off and we will be cleaning out underneath and throwing all the leaves and all, everything we trim in the trash. We do, do not compost And why are you it. doing that first? Because we want to see what it looks like, which, because we're going to take a look and Baldo will explain his, his method about going inside and seeing which canes to remove. So you make the cuts at the base and not go down and make, because that saves the amount of time you have to make cuts. It's more efficient. So we'll explain that. Because there's some big, oh, there's some brand new canes coming off too. So we want to make sure it's open in the center by the time we finish and, uh, and that it's appropriately sized. Because this is, this is a floribunda that has a tendency to get a little on the larger size. Floribundas, um, the designation is by the hybridizer, the person who, who uh, developed the plant. And some, some floribundas only get about three feet tall and some are six feet tall. So it depends uh, on that, let's say, um, um, what, hot cocoa gets about three feet wide and six feet, five, six feet tall. And like Julia Child only gets about three feet tall and three feet wide. So there, you know, so that's things you have to take in consideration. Well, what do you think? I think we're... I think, hey, Baldo, yes. what do you think? Well, we, it looks like we're ready. Yeah. We can see the bud union. The this beauty about the uh, uh, three roses is that you don't have to get down to the ground to prune all this stuff. The I bud union is right here at, uh, at the waist level. So it's, it's an idea for those people that uh, have, I'm thinking uh, those are hip, my clippers. have hip, hip problems. No? Oh, they're on your, um, on your ladder. Oh, on the oh. ladder. <laughs> Anyway, for those people that can't bend down to, to prune the roses, this is an ideal uh, uh, type of rose to grow. Uh, anyway, so this is the bud union, uh, or crown of the rose, and this is where all the main uh, canes emanate from. So the, the uh, goal is to uh, save uh, the, the, new, the new canes, in the vigorous canes and get rid of the uh, the older canes, uh, you know, especially those that are um, diseased, uh, damaged. Uh, are they crossing other crossing, canes? Uh, anything that kind of old. Yes, old. Anything that uh, points toward the center, you try to remove it, um, and then you try to shape the the rose in the, in the shape of a vase. Okay, with the uh, with the main canes coming out of or out of the basically bud in a round kind of a circle Correct. coming off of the main here. Yes. You might have one if you have one cane in the middle. You might keep that one. Yes. So this the, is look at this new cane. Yes. Whoa. So one of the first things that I do when I prune a rose bush, regardless of what what they, what it is, 
is I look for the newest canes, the key canes that I, I want to keep. And uh, this is these are two new canes right here. And I can tell that they're new canes because um, of the smooth bark, the nice and green. Uh, the older canes, uh, which are the kind of the, at the base, like this one. Or this is, one. Yes. The bark is kind of uh, cracked, uh, warty. It has lines on it. Yes. And it's darker brown. Where these yes. are nice and green and reddish, you can it, they just look fresh. Yes. So you want, you know, these are the key canes that you want to keep. So what I do is I identify all those canes that I want to keep, and then uh, I, I kind of stick to one can at a time, okay? And then I just go from the base up, and then I decide what type I'm going to keep it. Now, because this is a free road, uh, you want to shorten the, short the canes a little bit more than in a, a regular uh, uh, bush uh, planted on the ground. Because otherwise, um, uh, if, if this uh, tree road was not supported by uh, rods like this, that cane, that uh, base right here, the uh, the main the main uh, uh, rootstock, would crack. So it's very important for tree roses to put a put a very strong um, anchor uh, post uh, right next to it. Uh, one or more is ideal. Yeah, so what happens, and I've seen this happen, is the wind sometimes will catch it and twist it, and it will actually turn it. I had that happen to one of my tree, older tree rows, and it just broke off some of the limbs, and it's, eventually I had to dig it out. And three roses are very expensive. Uh, three roses uh, usually uh, uh, cost uh, at least twice as much as a regular rose bush. So it's very important to protect it. And the way to do it is to put a, uh, uh, an anchor in there that will support it. An inexpensive one is using rebar, which has been done here. Um, it just kind of rusts and it just looks natural. And then she uses twine to tie it to the rebar so that kind of holds it in place. And then you want to protect the trunk, trunk from the rebar by winding your twine around in and out. So yeah, some people use against. twine. I've used uh, old pantyhose. It turns nice and brown too, and it's very soft and very, very strong. Yeah, that works too. Don't use wire. No, don't use wire. <laughs> That's not a good idea. I I think I'd like to thin out some of the smaller twigs so we okay. can get in and reach in a little bit better. Well, what I like to do is uh, I like to get rid of some of the stuff that is uh, yes. seized. Okay, uh, go for it. Like, for instance, uh, this. Um, this peg right here, the end of oh, it, good. the end of it has canker, uh, which is a disease caused by a fungus. And then, if you don't remove those uh, those uh, the canker growth, uh, the canker will eventually kind of trans uh, move down the cane. So it's very important to uh, cut that out and then leave nice, uh, uh, healthy. Uh, uh, tissue. Okay. So, well, this is such See, a right here. Yes. This uh, this at the base has canker, so I'm going to take this one out. Okay. Again. Oh, does it have? See, uh, it has canker right there, and then it's kind of twisty and yucky. So those are the kind of canes that I. Let me see this. Oh. It it needs to be cut further. Oh yeah, yeah. We have. Oh yeah. We have a little bit, and we'll uh, we'll save some of these pieces, Gary, so you can take a look at that later. Okay. We'll see up. now, now it's. You have to get all white. If it has any darkness in the center, you got to go down further. Okay. All right. You want my loppers? Um, right here. There's also canker right here. Okay. And uh, we need to cut this area right there. And canker then, sometimes will enter on a cut and go down. And then same thing here. Yeah. yeah. So what I do is I... Oh, he's, he's strong. <laughs> and oh, look, you're already starting to open up this this bush. Yes. Just 
instead of going thick, 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 he goes after and goes and looks Again, at Again, this is all canker growth. So removing all the canker growth. This one needs it too. Yes. And this one does too. Where? Uh, where? Well, there's a. The the butt, uh, I know, that's why I pointed out. Okay. Um, I would say right here, but I would, I would, I, I need your lockers. Lockers. And uh, when I cut with uh, with lockers or with um, with uh, uh, pruners, I make sure that. This part of the lappers or the pruners is in the in the crotch area like this. Okay? So you're gonna to have to go more. We've got we've got uh we've got down the center. Uh, I think we're okay. You think you're okay? Yeah. Okay. I think um the uh I need to clean them? Yeah. I think it's oil. Uh, yeah, I did oil them the other day, yeah. so, but I didn't clean them. Okay. They get so, a lot of use. <laughs> okay, so then uh, uh, here, there's another canker, and then this is a nice cane, but it's kind of toward the center, so we're going to take it out. Okay? So we, we're cleaning the center. The reason you open it out and, and open the center so you get more airflow, so you have less issues with uh, powdery mildew or any fungal diseases. Okay, so now that we got rid of the oaks, get some uh, more. Some more. You get it? I'm blood. going to get rid of this one at this level because it's going out into the walkway. Okay. So I think we got rid of most of the most of the canker growth. So you can see that uh, now the center is, is clear. And uh, from now now we we need to concentrate around the bush and then uh, cut each cane uh, to help the wood and. And then the, and then point to either an outside bud or an or a bud that is not going to interfere with people walking around the, the road bush. For instance, in this, this one. <laughs> yeah. For instance, uh, right here, uh, if I prune like that, then the growth is going to go this way, there's and a, then yes, there's a bud that would stab them. Yeah. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to prune this way and then the growth is going to go this way or we can go this way and, send, and then we can send the growth this way. Yeah. So how you prune uh, determines which way the growth is going to go. So, so the bud eye tells you which way it's going to grow. Yes. It's almost like it's pointing the way. Yeah. So right here? Yes. And then right here? Yep, <laughs> that's where I go to. <laughs> and I'm going to do this one right here because it'll go here so it fill that little area. Okay, then I'm going to put right there. See right here? I got to send the growth. And do you want to kind of make them all sort of even? You don't yes. want an uneven bush? Correct. Yeah, you get a nice round frame. And think? some, uh, you've got your, your, that's too hot. Yeah. I go there. <laughs> I was this is, that's water. such a vigorous <laughs> cane, yeah, that you know it's going to put out a really good growth. So that's why we, I suggested we cut a little lower. You want my loppers again? Uh, are you got it? No, I'm, I got it. I'm going to cut this little twiggy thing because it's less than a pencil thickness. We do generally take everything off that's pencil thickness. And I get rid of all the twiggy stuff. 
And I'm going to prune this one down there. And that one there. It looks like you want to, we got this one going toward the center. Do you want to cut it there? Yes. Well, let me. Yeah. I was going to. Take that one out, yes. <laughs> that was been bugging me. It's been bugging me too. <laughs> and then this, um, I guess it's okay. Yeah, it's okay because it's not in any walkway. Yeah. Yeah, there. Too bad because we have a nice king, but it's got some things. Uh, go to the, the right way. Oh, you are strong, man. <laughs> Two more. Uh, we have canker right here. I hate to do it. But. Oh, well, you know, it's a strong, healthy cane. It's going to put out some nice new growth. Roses love to grow. So, um, and Linda's good about. I'm going to cut it right there. Fertilizing okay. after everything gets pruned, so they get a they get a lot of food to put out their new growth. What do you think, Linda? You want to um, I think this one needs to go to here. Okay. See, after you kind of prune it, then uh, this is where the individuality <laughs> comes in. Some people feel like uh, they have little, to be a little bit taller. Other people t feel that uh, <laughs> they just have to a be a little bit shorter. Just a little bit, so it's not too different from that. But we're basically, you know, we're in the same boat. You know, we, we think alike. Yeah. Uh, we just differ a little bit on... How much? How Looks much. good. But you can see so that... It, it might is... look scary to somebody who's not used to seeing that. But at the end of the season, it's going to be as big as it was when we started. You can always leave it taller because once you cut it, you cannot glue it back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Baldo Villegas, and I'm going to show you how to prune a uh, mini flora rose. Uh, this is this is a mini flora. This is uh, Dr. Troy Garrett. Uh, I originally got this rose from uh, Whitwells in Brighton, Tennessee. And, uh, so Whit was the hybridizer. Yes, Whitwells was a hybridizer, and uh, when I visited with him. He, um, he gave me uh, all of his uh, seedlings, and I including a lot of his um, uh, roses. And then I propagated some of this, and I gave them to my friends. Um, Dr. Garrett is an amazing, is an amazing herb, uh, mini, mini flora. flora. Um, he has roses like this that are just uh, like hybrid teas. Um, they're all. Uh, High center. Uh, now, so even though it's called mini, it's a huge bush. Yes. The blooms are the mini part. We're going to save it. Yes. Yes. Uh, in my garden, uh, the the bushes grow a, a lot taller than this. Uh, in my garden, they they grow up to seven feet tall. Uh, and five feet wide and any one of those bushes will produce hundreds of blooms uh, during the, at, at any one time during the growing season. So it's an amazing uh, machine of, uh, of roses. How do you get some of these roses? Because I don't always see them in the nursery. Uh, you have to know the hybridizers. And, uh, and or you your... have to know Baldo. <laughs> or 
you have to go to a, some of the rose societies propagate these roses and they off they oftentimes have them for sale we had a sale uh, several months ago and we had over 300 roses for sale so um, it, you know uh, that's it's good to to know some of these people it's announced um, um, on various different media accounts so uh, you can always email Baldo and say is there a rose sale <laughs> um, what we do is that we specialize with roses that are not patented and that are free for all and um, uh, anyway the uh, Whitwells died a few years back and um, he gave me the okay to propagating his roses so I've been doing that to uh, keep his name going in in rose culture anyway well we're gonna do the same we're gonna do the same thing as we did with the uh, with the three rows we're going to get rid of all the foliage so that we can see the the base of the rows uh, because uh, my method of pruning is from the bottom up so uh, let's get rid of some of the, some of the foliage uh, what I like to do is I like to prune my roses when when most of the foliage on a rose bush is yellow because that indicates that the rose is going into dormancy and to me that's the right time to prune and also I like to um, prune in, in days like this that are dry and you don't have to deal with the rain or wet foliage and as you can see I dress myself really well so that in case I I get uh, I get poked by the by the thorns. Um, we're going to be doing uh, a lot of kneeling uh, in this process of pruning. So I use um, uh, uh, knee pads, and like I said, I protect myself really well. Uh, long sleeves, uh, uh, clothing that I don't mind ripping. It's uh, eye protection is important too. Correct, and also head protection is also very good. <laughs> Especially when it's really cold. As you can see, I'm kneeling down in order to get down to uh, to the base of the rose. To do the Baldo method. So I can uh, show you the Baldo method of rose pruning. Uh, normally, a rose like this would take me under five minutes uh, to, to get it pruned. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to uh, take a little bit longer. And explain what he's doing. And explain what, <laughs> what I'm doing. Uh, Charlotte and uh, Linda will uh, assist and uh, also ask questions or make comments. Uh, or give we... them a bad time. Yes. So how do you start with a rose this big? Okay. Uh, first of all, you need to decide how tall you want it. And that's a matter of uh, preference. Uh, so uh, since you own this property right here, Linda, how high do you want <laughs> I this? want it tall because I thought I was planting a climber before and I think that one died. So I like it tall to kind of mirror that one. Okay, so normally with uh, mini flora roses, I like to prune it about, about, oh, about 18 inches, uh, 15 to 20 inches. Um, or also miniature roses. But uh, since she wants them a little bit taller, we're going to go maybe 24 inches, or depending About on what- 36 um, inches. Or 36 inches, depending on what uh, we, we, we see, okay? Okay. So- You want my loppers? But, um, ah. but first of all, we have to- I already have the rose. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I like to do is, I like to kind of look at the, um, at the uh, base of the rose, and decide which canes I'm going to leave. And then you can see that there are some very, very strong canes. And this, for instance, this is your best cane right here. And it goes from, from this cane right there, and it ends right there. And this uh, looks pretty healthy. So I'm going to, I'm not gonna cut it, uh, but you can cut it, you can uh, start cutting about this height, okay? okay. Um, in this, in this cane right here has to come out. Okay. Okay. And then uh, what I like to do is I like to cut it uh, probably right around here, 
or maybe right here. Yeah. Okay? So you would cut it here? Right about there? Right, yeah. But uh, let me... Let I'm going to let you do it because yeah, you can it. reach it from that side yeah, better. Yeah, because I have to get rid of some canes in order to kind of get, get a there. better angle. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of a lot of the twiggy stuff in order to get uh, into the middle of the rose bush so I can... Uh, uh, one of the other things to remind you, um, get a little diamond sh uh, blade sharpener. You can get those on Amazon or at any hardware, even uh, probably some nurseries. And um, it'll be, uh, we're going to do a little section on tools, but it's very important to keep your blades very sharp because it saves on wear and tear your hands and makes things a lot easier. I can tell his blade is very sharp. I have not sharpened this uh, this pair of pruners at all since I because bought it for three ARS. years ago. Yeah. It's an ARS pruner, and they don't need sharpening. Right. I mean, they're amazing roses. Right. I mean, the amazing tools. Very high quality steel yes. that retains its. Uh, so now, darkness. now that I cut uh, some of the smaller canes, I can get in here now. And I can remove um, some of the the, the big. Uh, I'm gonna have to get in there a little bit closer, but um, so while I'm, I'm at it. Okay. So now we can get in here now and uh, help get this rose bush. And again, I'm. Uh, I'm getting rid of uh, stuff that's disease. This has canker. Anything that points towards the middle, I'm getting rid of. How does canker develop, Waldo? Um, it's developed by an open wounds, and then you have, um, where you have the spores, the rain, the moisture will, will um, help uh, grow that, those those spores, and it it blocks the 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 growth on that where the water comes up the plant on the xylem, right? Or kills the whole tip of the the yeah, cane. Yeah, it, it continues down down the uh, cane, and then eventually just kills. Uh, I'm leaving that this, thing, this a little bit higher because uh, Linda wanted this uh, rose uh, yeah. higher than, uh, but I would like to leave it. And um, as I prune this rose, I look for outside buds that don't interfere with the rest of this these canes that I'm leaving, okay? And again, this is just tentative right now. Um, I'll come back and do the final, the final, depending on what Linda wants. Okay, now let's go to the frame and see what, um, what it looks like from the other side. And this is the reason we're doing this uh, mini flora as differently than I would normally uh, do it because um, Linda is treating it like a climber. Okay, so you take away maybe the twiggy stuff and then you yeah. get a feel for it. Want me to start cutting the yeah. the twine? Let's uh. Getting rid of the uh, twiggy stuff, and I'm uh, making sure that the um, buds point to um, away from the center because we don't want people to get snagged when they walk by this Do you push. want to get rid of this entire thing? Yeah. I just recounted my timers. 
I'm not surprised. <laughs> What's your goal there, Baldo? Um, I'm uh, getting all the twiggy uh, uh, stems, leaving the skeleton so that uh -huh. against the uh, against the. So uh, go that direction. Yes, that goes out in that direction. We're gonna cut by this one, like. If you leave it, I'll try yes. it. Whatever you want to do, Baldo, and well, then I'll just work you, with it. Since you are uh, using this as a climber, yeah, we're I going am. to treat it as a climber. Yeah. In some of these flor um, floribundas, I mean, some of these mini floras and some of these roses, whenever, whenever, whenever I see cl uh, candelabras like this. What's a candelabra? A candelabra is where you have multiple stems emanating from the same, from one stem like this. Uh -huh. And if I see a, a very uh, vigorous candelabra coming from the, from the base, I usually make a tree rose out of it. Uh -huh. and and then I, I leave it like this. This would be a perfect... Uh, so you leave the candelabra? I leave the candelabra. Instead of shortening the stems, I just leave it in place like that. Okay. And... Uh, uh, you, you would, if you had a, a mini floor and you see that from the base, then you would make it kind of like a tree rose. Correct. And if you come to my garden, you're gonna see a lot of can a little a lot of little candelabras like that, in out of my miniature roses and my mini flora roses. And see? Okay. See that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint it like that. Okay. Let's try it out. Yeah. Where is your shoot? Where is the okay. jute? I will get the jute and the scissors. Basically, the uh, rose is pruned. <laughs> and, uh, but the, the main thing that in, in uh, miniature semini floras is that you, treat, you, you prune them just like you other roses, but you kind of shorten them down a little. And then the important thing is that you should be able to uh, get your hand inside the rose bush, and if you if your cloth gets snagged from doing this, then you left too many things in the middle. Okay, so again, uh, shape your bush in the shape of a vase so that the canes are on the outside and the canes don't interfere and then make sure that you get rid of all the canker growth at the end of the canes. Uh, when you leave a cane, make sure that it's nice and healthy. And we'll have uh, uh, um, close-ups of uh, diseased canes and, um, and healthy canes uh, for, for people to see. So basically we're, we're done with this rose. Okay. A hybrid tea rose and I just want to show you how to prune a hybrid tea rose from the bottom up 
Uh, now, knowing how I prune, um, I prune, I make sure that I can see the bud union very well. I uncover the anything that uh, prevents me from the, seeing the, the bud union. So in this one, it's very easy. Um, so the best, the next thing I do is I figure out which canes I'm going to leave. And for instance, this one is the, is the best cane. I, I like to call them the studly canes. That's yes. the newest, the youngest, and it produced the biggest and the most blooms. That's the classic case of a uh, candelabra. And uh, then after that, we're going to try to work with these two areas right here, cut, uh, cutting the middle cane, uh, the middle cane and try to get rid of some diseased uh, canes. So. And open it up a little bit yes. too. So with that in mind, since I can't get uh, into the, um, in there to, to look at the best cane, I'm going to kind of work my way over there. Yeah, you're gonna clean it out and yeah. open it up at the same time. Oops. And see. Uh, the center of this one is all brown, and he needs to make sure the center is white. And see as I go down. See oh, I... he's even got more. He's got to go. There was a bore or something that went down the center of that cane. So, I wasn't planning on this. But sometimes, that's what happens. Now, this is what it should look like. It's nice and white. Okay. So then, um, from here, I decide how high I'm going to leave this this uh, this cane. Uh, I can go right here, but see this will send the bloom this way and might interfere with the uh, with the walkway. So I'm going to go this way and send the growth this way. Okay. So this cane is done. Now I'm going to go here in the middle. Oh poor. Oof. Sometimes that happens. Um, I think I gotta leave it like this. Okay. Because it's down so low. And yeah, it's, it's down so low. The uh, the only other way to do it is to cut the whole cane out. Yeah. And uh, maybe next year we'll get rid of this. Sometimes you gotta make tough decisions like that just to leave it, and that's okay. That way he has a better shape of the bush. Okay. That one looks like I'd get, yes, yeah, so all the very base, because it's in the middle. It's in the middle. And you want to open up the middle. And he's going to go, there's, yeah. Okay, that looks good. Oh boy, now's the, no, no, I can't go You way. go that way, okay. I gotta go this way. Can I get rid of this? Okay, see here, the rose, oh, there's some candy, there's some candy right there, so. See right here, this rose, there, these roses are too close together. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to prune away from this rose bush I don't think so either. by directing the growth that way. Are you going to leave her a, can a candelabra? Well, do you want a tree rose, Linda? I don't know. Whatever you want to do, Baldo. Oh, he's going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to kind of uh, do my best here, and then uh, then trim down if you don't agree.
can leave it like that, or we can go shorter. That's fine. Okay. See, all the canes are kind of... Yeah, I'm good with that. This is going to send the growth this way. This one is going to go that way. This one is going to go that way. So none of the, the new growth will interfere with each other. And that's a stunning rose, and it yes. blooms a lot. And I would hate to cut any anything lower than that. Because yeah. Now, this cane bothers me because it's just not... Uh, well, you could so take I, it out. I like to cut it right there at the base. You could take it out. And because of the thickness, oh. <laughs> I'm going to use... Grand price. They're white with a little yellow center. Uh, pink in uh, cooler weather. They start out that way. And uh, they make a nice border and they're almost always in bloom. So, Florabunda. There you go, Baldo. The idea here is that we, we can leave um, more twiggy growth uh, so that you get a lot of bloom. Because here we don't we're not, we're not going after exhibition. Uh, exhibition, um, you leave less less wood, and you leave uh, more vigorous stems. Um, so in this, we're going to leave a little more. We don't cut it as hard. Correct. And uh, how high do you want this? Uh, they can go down to around here. I would say. I noticed that. Feet. Uh, I noticed that you, you know, this is uh, uh -huh, this is where you pruned them last yeah. year. Or so year it's before. around that. Okay, so that's about uh, 18 inches. Yeah. Okay. 18 inches too big. Yeah. Somewhere in there. So again, uh, as in uh, what we were saying before, we kind of look at the at the key at the uh, at the crown uh, of the rose. This is not a bud union. This is a crown because these roses most likely were grown from cuttings. And, I got uh, Reagan's. Yeah, but the grower... Oh, okay. The grower uh, produced them from cuttings. Okay. Okay. So, anyway, so again, we need to clear the center so we can see all the, uh, all the canes coming, emanating from the base. And then, uh, prune each um, cane to about about 18 inches. Uh, we'll we'll leave them a little bit higher, and then we might cut them down Go a down little bit, bit. Uh, depending on what we find. Okay. Okay. Um, so first thing is we identify the best canes. The best cane is like this one right here it has the smooth bark green uh, green bark this is um older cane right here you can see the uh this color uh, bark and it's kind of uh, cracked this one is very smooth so that's how you identify the new canes so Look like this one was already pruned at uh, about a foot uh, from the from the bottom, so we're gonna leave it like that. Um, next, we're going. 
I see one cane here that's crossing. So we took it out. This one is um, it's around eight inches from the bottom. That one is about a foot from the bottom. Looks like we we just we're just taking one can at a time and then just kind of pruning anything that grows to the outside. Okay. So this is what I meant. Uh, we'll leave them a little bit high and then uh, see what uh, Linda thinks about uh, if she wants them any lower than that. that last one so it wouldn't be growing yeah the center. I cut it uh, would this one be one to take out totally uh, it could it could but let's uh, let's continue one. let's continue doing it okay and then um, we'll decide again okay. you know if if you cut something once you cut it you can't glue it back. back okay so uh, I'm being conservative okay See that, that growth it was going toward the middle. And I'm pruning to avoid growth this way. Uh -huh. I'm looking for buds that are going different ways because I don't want to send growth into the pathway. Into, into the pathway. This one was, was crossing and kind of going the wrong way. Both, um, this is all growth right there. And again, this is right now a salt tentative cut, okay? Now this is a dilemma. What do I do with it? So I cut this bloom off to about here so I can put it in the bouquet. Okay. You can see that um, okay now let's clean it up a little bit and then figure out what else we can cut. Okay, so that what I'm doing here is I'm just going to cut out the twiggy canes. The really tiny ones. Yeah, the real tiny ones. How about there? That looks good. Do we need to take any of those old ones out or wait um, till next year? It's up to you what you want to do, but that's what, if it was in my yard, that's the way I would leave it. Okay. Because it's a, uh, you want a hedge. Yeah. Okay. And uh, 
You can always that didn't take, take them long. Out. Mm. Yeah. Now, someone asked me the question the other day. You know, is there? You know, we've got thorns and things like that, and we're working in the dirt. Is there any possibility of getting tetanus if you prick yourself? That's why we wear our gloves and yeah. protection. Well, you know, that's how we. That's why I protect myself really well. And you do need your tetanus shot. Oh yes, yes. In fact, uh, I'm with Kaiser, and uh, Kaiser has all my records, so I can always tell when I, when the last time I had a tetanus, a tetanus shot. Right. And uh, I, I had one in uh, uh, 2000, 2017. So I'm and good. And it's what every it's seven to ten, it's, ten years. It's ten. every ten years. So. I think I'm due. So when I asked my doctor, the previous one was 2009, and I, anyway, when I asked my doctor, he says, Baldo, you just had one in 2017. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so anyway. Okay, good. So we'll do all of those kind of matching that.